Welcome back, everyone. This is the Flow Track Podcast. I am Kevin. He is Gordon. Our email address: flowtrackpodcast at gmail dot com. Got a busy show for you today. U.S. Indoor Championships, World Cross Country Championships, and we got a great indoor meet that's going today as well. To Gordon, you're going to go to Albuquerque for USA as you're leaving in a. Let's see. Oh, Friday. Two days. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. meet starts Thursday, but I'm going Friday. Yeah, cutting it close. Sorry, to go back in time to cover the meet. We should mention though, programming note: the Friday show has been moved to Thursday yes. as a result, and it's going to be in the morning. Tomorrow's a show for the diehards. Yeah. Let's just say because it's going to be an off day, off time. We're going to be at home. We're not going to be in studio. Nine a.m. Central. It's Thursday. OG time. Exactly, but not on an OG day of the week. No. I don't think we've ever done... Well, we did Thursday back in the day when we were doing five of them. But. So if you're listening to this podcast late in the afternoon on a Wednesday mm -hmm. or later on in the week, Levin just happened. Yeah, Levin already happened. What a meet that was. It was incredible. People thought it was going to be good. I say it was even better, Gordon. I think it was better than good. Did you see the run the, that Grant Fisher did? Yeah, completely unexpected. Unexpected. He ran in a way that... None of us thought what is possible. Agreed. And what about Ingebrigtsen? I mean, how does that change things for his future? He ran exactly as a great wood run. You think in so? In the first race. Oh, really? That's I, what I expected. I thought it was a little more up in the air. I mean, what about the women's 1500? Rudolf Sagai. What about that? I mean, she missed the world record in the mile when she went for it. But and in then this she comes race, here. She comes and just does something, again, completely out of left field. Yeah. And then that DQ, oof, I feel bad for that athlete. That athlete. That athlete had it tough. Yeah. What about the sprints and stuff? Too? It was great. I mean, Marcel Jacobs. Marcel Jacobs, he mm. did the thing mm -hmm. where he went <laughs> across the finish line. What a run. Some are saying, I think the most talked about meet of the year. Yeah. I, I just think that this uh, was, a, was a track meet that occurred and it was thrilling from start to finish. I, I'm not going to get any disagreement. And ending with what Warholm did in the 400. Who saw that coming except for Warholm? Yeah, 100% he saw it coming. He saw it coming. He knew what he was going to do. The good thing about the Thursday pod, we'll be able to fill in these blanks <laughs> tomorrow morning. We don't have to wait that long. Yeah. But this will be a little bit out of date. But we'll talk about the weekend meets. Yeah, we're going to talk about the weekend. We're doing like a, a preview above another meet, and then we're going to react to the meet after. So it's a lot. Levin, why are you doing your meet? At three o'clock Eastern time. They should right. have done their meet either in like the, earlier or later. They need to center the world athletic schedule around this podcast, is what we're trying to say. Yeah. So it's live right now? No, it's not live right now. Well, it's the pre programming live. is live right now. Yeah. The real racing starts at one fifty Central Time. Central time in the US. So in an hour. You can watch it on if Flow Track. In the US. Or Canada. Or Australia. Which is hosting World Cross Country Championships. What a segue. Well, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to okay. start first with USA's. your trip to Albuquerque. Yep. <sighs> Let's go, to, go through these fields. All right. All right. Before we go through the fields. All right. You want me to tell you about these fields? Yeah. So what you saw the fields for USA's. Yeah. The pinnacle of our sport, winning a national championship. <laughs> In, in the United... No, the pinnacle of our sport apparently is to leave in France. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's our Super Bowl during indoors. Yeah, even by non-championship indoor standards, the fields are more depleted than I would have thought. I've been to a lot of these, right? I've been to... I think I went to the, the first one was like 2010 U.S. Indoor so Championship. over a decade. Over a decade. Now, I haven't got to every single one, but I'm pretty familiar with U.S. Indoors, yeah. right? You get couple superstars here, maybe a good battle there. You're not going to get everybody. You're never going to get everybody. But you get the Rupp versus Legat, right? You get Jenny Simpson going for the double, right? You get Christian Coleman. You get a lot of superstars. You go through this start list, Gordon, there are a lot of events where people are going to be U.S. champions who probably entering indoors, they didn't even think that they'd be in the mix for an indoor title. And I get it. Non-championship year. There's other options. There's better options. But like I said, even by off-year standards, this is a lot of anonymous fields. Yeah. But we do have a few. Yeah, I want to highlight a few. few athletes who are going to make it worth my trip there. All this to say, have a great – you'll discover some new names. Yes. Let's look at it that way. Let's frame it positively and say there's going to be some national champions that you didn't think would get a crown. 
and now they're going to get one, and they're probably going to be very excited to talk to you. I don't know about that. They'll be moderately excited to talk to you. Maybe. They might talk to you. They might talk to me. They might talk to me. Maybe. uh, Okay, let's talk about the 60. Okay. The men's 60. Because you set the stage on Monday's show when you announced that Bromel and Coleman were both out. I thought we'd get at least one. I thought having both of them plus Lyles would make this just as close to A-level as you could get for a meet like this. But now it's left to Lyles. And Lyles now is the favorite which is an interesting position for him to be in, in a 60 meter. Yeah. Very interesting. Cause he, you would think he, the 60 is like his underdog type race, mm-hmm. but he's going to get guys like Kobe Hilton, Brandon Carnes, JT Smith. I haven't heard any. I mean, Cravon Gillespie and Kendall Williams are probably the two <clears throat> biggest names mm-hmm. on this list. But outside of those two guys, it's really kind of, you know, People who are running marks that wouldn't even qualify for NCAAs. I mean, we have a bunch of six twos, six threes, six fours on this C time. So six sevens. You mean not yeah. six twos? We don't have any six twos. Six point six point six twos. Gotcha. Six oh wow. Point six sevens. You're that into track that you can just skip that middle digit. Everyone knows the first you... <laughs> digit's a six. I love it. Come on. No, uh, th- yeah. There's only six people entered <laughs> that are under six six. You would have thought, okay, beginning of the year. Ken I call Williams. that six out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kendall Williams beat Lyles. Okay, maybe he's going to be the number one. Ch- I still think he probably is. Him and Hilton are the number one challenger to Lyles. But Williams at, at Milrose, even though Lyles was DQ, Lyles beat him by a decent margin. So I think this is Lyles to win 6-5-1. I know Hilton's run 6-5-1, but in a big-time championship race. I'll take Lyles rising to the occasion. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious to pick Lyles in this situation. I think the real question is, will Lyles run another PB? It's at altitude. Yeah. And I think if he can end his season with a 6.4 something, yeah. yeah, that is good for your prediction of him winning the one and the two. And I think that's why this is still an interesting race to watch because he's, number one, he's a star. And number two, he's a star who's taking this season seriously. So no matter where he goes or what event he runs – you're going to be keeping track of what Noah Lyles does. And the fact that it's at altitude, you're right, on a, tra- on a track that's quick, it's a good opportunity for him. Hey, forget the field. Let's block all that out. I'm here. I know he wants a U.S. title, especially in a 60. That's just kind of fun. Expands his range. But also, can he get his PR under 650? All right. I'm mm-hmm. putting the over under at 649. I need to be a push. I need to run exactly 649. So what would that be? That's you can just say that you can just call it for a push, but if you're wrong, then you're. Screwed. Can you can you set it at can you set it at six four nine five? No, I'm setting it at six four nine because I want you to feel pressure to go six four eight or not believe they can break six five. Uh, I'll go under. Okay, I think four eight is possible, especially with the rounds. I'm going. I, you're I'm not going saying over. the final. You're saying in general he runs it right. So if he does it in a in a round, that's okay too. No, it's a final. I'll still do. I'll stay under. I'm doing over. Man, you're really trying to just catch up. Yeah. Regardless, you're just going to pick the opposite <laughs> yep. of what I do. Let's go to the women's 60. Uh, Hobbs, Briscoe, Sant Price, the top three seeds. Yeah, we've seen Hobbs go under seven. Now she's at altitude. I wonder if she can lower it. Remember the mark that we had our eyes on um, this year was Gail Deaver's American record. In this event, which is six nine five, three one hundreds away, Hobbs was above. She was above seven seconds at Melrose, but margin of victory was good. Not a ton of just out and out insanely fast times on that armory track. So, do you think she can get six nine five? Yeah. <laughs> Over under. If you're watching or not listening to the podcast, I was trying to do dramatic effect yeah. with my prediction. I think she, I think she runs. Uh, no, I don't think she runs 6.95. I think she PRs. I think she runs 6.97 or faster. 6.96 or 6.97, yeah. yeah. But, again, I think she was a big favorite last week, and this field is more beatable. So I expect her to cruise. I don't think she'll have any problem here. I don't know if Bob more beatable. Makai Briscoe's pretty good. Yeah, she's great. But Hobbs has been been, been better, better this yeah, year. This sure. year she's been. Sure, sure, sure. She's been better. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that that two, there's not that many sub-seven women, and two of them are – all time. All right, over under six ninety six six ninety seven. Six ninety seven. 
I'll go under on that one. I'm going to go under with you. Gordon joining me. All right, next event. Women's 3000. Actually, I'm going over. I'm going over. Okay. I, I got to come back in this thing. Women's 3000. You brought up a point to me yesterday when I was talking about the fields and telling you about, you know, the, the stars that were missing. And you said, hey, sometimes you got to realize there's new stars coming and you just don't realize who they are yet. You're so fixated on the person who won last year Old five stars, years yeah. ago. And now we have new names. I think Women's 3000 is a perfect example because you got Whitney Morgan who just ran 830. At Milrose. Yeah, that was a fast race, but she was also stuck completely between uh, 820, an 825 woman and an 835 woman. So that'll be fun for her to see against in more championship style racing. Um, and Ellie Hennis, who was an NCAA champion a couple years ago, she ran at Milrose too. So this field, I think it'll be interesting from that perspective. Hennis was 836 to Morgan's 830. Yeah, maybe this is the beginning of something. I think it is the beginning of something. I think it's the beginning of, you know, her kind of establishing herself. Like, yes, get the Bowerman woman and you got Alicia Monson. But, hey, I ran 830 by myself, basically, in no woman's land between Tui and Monson. I think she comes out here, gets the win. And I think uh, the little Dilji Taylor situation of her because she coaches Whitney York Morgan, mm. right? Yeah. You have her and then Courtney Wayman. It's probably going to be doing really well in the steeple. Yeah. You could have a little new like team of women who are starting to make some teams in 2023, more than just one. Yeah. Right now it's just Courtney Wayman's show. But if Whitney Morgan is running this well, maybe she translate this into a fast 1500 down the line. You know, Dilsey Taylor might have two stars. What, what do you think her best chance to make a team outdoors, is? Morgan, 15 or five? Five. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. But, five. but that's tough. We've already talked about how difficult that's going to be with. Yeah, it's tough, but like, I don't know. I feel like there's, we don't know much about Schweizer yet. True. Because she, didn't she have an injury? Previously, yeah. But I think she's, is she 100% healthy? Well, remember, she got hurt in Eugene. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know. We don't, we know, don't but know. You're right. Yeah. Maybe we'll look back at, oh, yeah, Morgan won indoors and ran 830 at Milrose. She should have been considering the make. I, I think you know, no worse. I think she's a top six or seven in an, in the event. Yeah, when everybody's running it. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think she should. I think she can take care of business in this one. The men's eight hundred was another one that was interesting. This one has some big names in it, right? You have Isaiah Harris, who quietly got a PB last week at Melrose. Quietly, no Cabet won the race. But Isaiah Harris, I picked him to win that race. He's run a lot of 800s. Yeah, he he's run a lot of fast 800s. So for him to set a PB in that event, I think it's noteworthy. It's not like some of these PBs that you see. Oh, the person never ran that event, or for three years they didn't run it. Isaiah Harris ran in some high quality 800s year in and year out. So he's in there. Hopple got bumped early on in that race, and that sort of ended him at Milrose. I think this is a chance for him to. Get some redemption. I think he's going to want to do well. Get his groove back. Clayton Murphy is in there as well. All totaled, you have, let's see. You have, you have three under 146 in the qualifying window. Shane strikes under 146 as well, too. Do you think Harris is the favorite coming off of Milrose? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because the next fastest guy who ran this year, I mean, there's some college kids who've run – Fast, no, US but in the no, U, U.S. college kids who felt yeah. fast, but Bryce Hopple ran 146.5 in Boston. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Harris has run 145.6 in New York, a full second. Murphy hasn't been close there. I, Harris seems to be taking it. He always seems to take indoors seriously. And he's training at altitude yeah. in Albuquerque. I think, I think this is Harris's win. I think Harris is going to win this. All right. The last event or group of events or person I wanted to talk about men's 1500 men's 3000 Cole Hawker. He was slated to go at Milrose. He was a scratch in that race. We've seen him double in this before we saw him double at NCAAs. He's entered in both. Now what was the official reason for his scratch? Was he the, was he food poisoning? Was it food poisoning or injury? I thought, I thought it, was, it was ankle. Oh really? Maybe, Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Am I confusing that with somebody? Let me look this up. Cole Hawker. Does the chat know? Cole Hawker. Why did Cole Hawker scratch? Anybody know? 
You didn't you didn't hear the the food poisoning thing? I thought it was scratch. We gotta find this out. Why did Cole Hawker scratch? No results for Cole Hawker scratch. Come on, Twitter. Come on. Cole Hawker scratch. I'm gonna do it in oh, Yeah. Cole Hawker Milrose, maybe? Maybe Yeah, that'll be better. Probably better. Cole Hawker Miller. This is the worst podcast ever. We are just. Jacob says Achilles. Achilles Cameron says See, injury. Yeah, Achilles. So yeah. that scares oh, me. Sinclair Johnson was. Sinclair food Johnson poison. was food poison. Okay. So I don't. Th- I think Hawker might not be 100 percent healthy. But he's still doing this and he's doubling. But also, he I don't think just, you're doing that at US Indoors if you don't feel like you're healthy. Or he could just scratch. Oh. Between now and when the race starts, yeah. man, you're really just taking a bleak look. I mean, he did that at Milrose. He scratched like the night before, right? Yeah, but didn't they just they update declarations all the time? Okay, well, if he doesn't scratch, just live in the world where he doesn't scratch. Okay, he can still double in this field because Abdiham Ben Nur scratched the three thousand. Christian Noble's in there, Hackers in there, Prakel's in there in the fifteen hundred. Josh Thompson, Henry Wynn, Prakel, Ribich. These are very beatable fields for him. Yeah. I'm just cu- – he's just – there's a lot of curiosity with Cole Hawker based on what happened last Especially year. Especially after seeing what Yard is doing. Exactly. And, like, seeing, like, him kind of, like, taking over the mount of, like, the king of the mid-distance for U.S. We thought Hawker was that guy after he beat Centro at the Olympic trials. And we're like, oh, man, running – him and Cooper Tier running amazing in Oregon. And Hawker, you know, making an Olympic final. He's yeah. the next guy. Then all of a sudden, two years later, we're talking about – a guy just breaks the American record in the mile in the 3K in, in a four week in a two week span. Who's also really young? Who's okay. also young, same similar age, maybe a year older or something. So this maybe is Hawker's chance to like, yeah, I didn't have like a, a phenomenal, you know, time trial season, yeah. but I still show that I'm race sharp. I can still beat, which is probably a B minus field, maybe if it's a C plus field, I don't know. But there's always doubles in this meet in the 15 and the three, whether it's men or women. And then we always get they get a lot of headlines yeah. coming out of it because it's like their, their kick, their kick looks, looks so in, great. insane. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, who are you? Who are you kicking again? Sometimes it's good. Sometimes, if, you know, field quality is good. Oftentimes it's not going to look like a Diamond League field or a U.S. championship outdoor field. But still, it's a good positive step if he's able to get out there. I I guess I, I'll change my my expectations to if he just out there competing wins one of the two, I think that's good based on what he was. Yeah. And if he is really having an Achilles issue, because that can really sideline you. What else are you looking forward to? Anything else? Those are the ones I had written down. I'm excited to see uh, Drew Hunter in the 1500. I think he's going to be an interesting watch. He scratched the 3K just to focus on the 15. Um, I think he can surprise some people. He didn't run too well at Milrose, but he still ran 355, obviously. 355s are now the new four flats, but mm-hmm. um, it would be cool to see if Hunter can kind of surprise some people. I think he might be a little well, bit surprised. I, yeah. Thompson Thompson being in there and Wynn being in there, like, and Prakel, it, it raises the floor yeah. a lot in that race. So even if Hawker scratches, you're going to have somebody win that who's either made teams or been in the mix for teams, either indoors or outdoors. Prakel might win this race. Well, Remember, Prickle made it, made the team. Yeah. Now that I think time. about it, I think Sam Prickle. He's training with uh, with Danny Powell, is he, right? Is he, uh, that's a, that's that's on your beat. I'm, I'm well, assuming so. Yeah, yeah. He's training with Danny Powell. They got like nine sub four milers. They're how many? Not like twelve sub four milers. Actually, I I, I looked it up. Uh, you're gonna hate that I'm bringing this up, but I. No, you should bring it up more. I'm going to bring it up one last time. This is my last time I'm going to bring it up, but I'm just going to do it because it's fun. <laughs> Washington's... Oh, no. You really are bringing it up. C team in the four by mile. Their C team, not their B team. So they're ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th best milers. Let me guess, they broke four. Is four flat, Isaac Green, 401, Ed Trippus, 402, Will Laird, and 403, Sam Affolder. 16.07. Their C team could run 16.07. Their B team could run 15.47, and their A team could run 15.30. It's freaking stupid how much Myler U is 
Washington. And if Sam Prakel is the star pro of Myler U, yeah, I think that's going to translate to a 1500 meter title at USA's in Albuquerque. That's mm. how it all works. Did you turn off your brain while I was talking and now you're ready to start talking again? Yeah, I'm going to talk about, well, because. It's so fun when I try to have a conversation with the side of your head. Well, you do Knowing that, that you're not listening to anything it, I'm saying. It's only when you talk just about staring how many at the college screen. programs have guys breaking for us. You the just only time stare at the it. screen and I'm just like thinking I'm having a conversation, a relationship with you. But you're just like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm, all right, you done? Now I'm going to change you do the it a lot. I'm going to start turning my body just to show how engaged I am. Kyle said Anna Hall double. Something to look forward to. She has entered in the pentathlon. And the four. And the four. So that might ultimately end up being the story. Because guess what seed she is in the four? Number one seed. Yeah. That's, I'm sorry, but it's That'd not. That would be pretty, it, it, pretty it, sweet it, double, though. Yeah, That'd but it, it's cool a double. sweet double, but like it's a, it, it kind of reminds me of the Jerry and Lawson triple at NCAAs, which took the Bowerman well, away from Cheser. This, this is a Wait, did, oh, now, see, now I'm going to turn my head again because I don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, but like – It's just – it's cool that she's trying it, though. It's cool that she's trying it, but if we're going to be Six real, events. you look at the field that she's racing against, no other woman has broken 52 seconds. Yeah, I'm not saying it's this she is She can world literally – I mean, the next best runner is Nasha Robinson, who ran 52.4. Pentathlon field, though. There's some, there's some notable names there. Like, it's not – She should win it, though. But. The, there's going to be a woman who makes the final – Who's run 55 seconds? Are they going to eat one, two, three, four, five, six? Seven, oh, they have 10. Yeah, it's, it's not a real event. It's, it's very fraudulent. And I know Anna Hall would admit that because Anna Hall doesn't need a 400 indoor title to prove that she's a great talent because she's one of our next big heptathlete champions. But winning the 400 indoors is going to really not mean much. And then the pentathlon. I'm just saying, I like that she did it. The pentathlon feels solid. Hawkins, Marsh. Some, yeah, some, the Tathlon field shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just think it's cool she's doing it. Well, she's the Pentathlon's one day. Lot, she does it on Thursday and then she's done. Okay, that's still six events in two days. A lot of people are doing zero events in two days. I want to give credit. Yeah, but like that, that sixth event that she's doing is like a cool down. Still cool. It's a cool I down that like will, it. She's literally going to cool like, down from the Pentathlon and win a title. I like cooling people, down. I like people who collect a bunch of titles. You like I, the Molly I, Huddles of the road. I envision myself, if I was ever that good, that is exactly what I would do. I'd no. be like, you know what? I want that on my Wikipedia page. I yeah, want that it's on cool. my Wikipedia page. I want that on my now it's she, a fun fact, but like we gotta she recognize probably, she's not She probably entered it before she had any clue who was in it, right? Because she probably was, hey, I'll just run something, I'm already there. Yeah. I'll get a fast time at it. In fact, she probably wants there to be top flight competition yeah. to pull her to a, a PR. Time, that's yeah. what that's what she wants. Me I think it's just cool. You just keep racking up title after title after title. But I bet you Anna Hall like, could go. Her, I bet you Anna Hall could enter the, the, long the 3K race walk and win. She's pretty good. I don't know about how much race walking. However, she has, Maria but... Michada Coffee and Miranda Melville, they've been the queens of the race walk in the U.S. side for like a decade. I was just saying she could do in the long jump, but long jump's pretty good. She's in the long jump. No, I'm saying the long jump field is pretty good. That one would be hard. I mean, you got. Yeah, Davis and Burks, Kendall Williams in there. Nichols yeah, Kendall Williams isn't doing the pentathlon. Yeah, I'm just saying. They dodging give, each other. Give credit to the people who are competing in the events. You can't get mad at the people not competing at the events. I'm not. And then I give credit to the people who are. Oh wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. So now you get credit for hold participation. On, I got to turn my. We get credit for participation. No, I'm saying she's gonna win both of them. Yeah. So give credit for winning. Yeah, you actually do in track and in indoors. You do get that's credit sad for participation. that we're getting that you get showing up. Get yeah, credit for participation. Yeah, that's what our sports come well, down to. Well, you can't win if you don't participate. Like it's like how many Olympic medals do you have? And then how many Olympics how many you world titles do you have? And then how many times do you participate in track meets? Is that like the number three in the power rankings? It's hard of to be a fan of being something. Being a great athlete, it's hard to be a fan of something if you don't participate in the thing. I was thinking about that last night when I was watching the. Clippers play basketball. And Kawhi Leonard was great. Yeah. You barely see Kawhi Leonard play basketball. And I'm just thinking, who are the – and I used to be a huge Kawhi Leonard fan because he used to play for the Spurs, and he played a lot more games then. But now you just don't see him that much. And it's just hard to be a fan of something in sports if you don't see it that often. I agree. And you don't see it that much. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. She's going to win the four. She's going to win the pentathlon. It's going to be funny. But she's going to win the 400 running like 52.05. And she's going to be like, that's all I had to do? I can do another one. Can we just do two 400? She should do another. She should run the 400 
and then just run another 400 right after. You're going to be there. You should tell in her, her that. In her victory lap. She should run an 800. You should tell her that. She should do an 800. And let her 800, 400 meter split be her time. Well, while you're in Albuquerque, I'm going to be covering the other big event, World Cross. You go in Australia? Flying to Australia. Surprise. Your, oh. Do I have my passport? I already have my passport. No, just kidding. I'm not going. I kind of wish Speaking I was. Speaking of passport, I've been using my passport a lot lately. Yeah, because your driver's license is expired. Yeah, and I haven't updated yet. You probably should go get that. I feel I feel kind of cool when they're like, can I see your ID? And I'm like, yeah, you can. And I show them my passport. Like, I feel like a European when I show a passport at the bar in Austin, Texas. They're like, oh, okay, this guy's a passport and a driver's license. He must be like a, a legitimate figure. And then they find out why you don't have a driver's license. We don't tell them why I don't have a driver's license. We just show them the passport. Yeah, well, this expires get, in 2027. This guy is this, a this freaking on, flyer. This guy's on top of it. Yeah, it's only 2023. Yeah, this guy's good What's to go. Going on? All right, women's field, men's field. We'll start with the women's. But side. you're not going to Australia. No, it's a joke. I, dude, this is especially actually. Uh, Nico, can you click over? Let's do the men's first. This men's race is legit. As much as you talk about, oh, this championship, what does it really mean? This men's senior race, it's good. Might be as good as the. 10k like on the track there's some countries obviously missing but when you start out with chapter guy camor and kip limo but that's a pretty big good big three that you start working with here um you see it there uh nico will throw it up there we obviously know chapter guy world record holder a gold medalist cam has been sensational in this event same with uh, Kip Limo, who's been great on the track and the half marathon. Kenyan team's going to be solid. You got Kibiwak Candy and Nicholas Kip Career there, um, and then Ethiopia has Borega and Aragawi. I mean, this is this is a Diamond League field. This is a World Championship final type field. The difference is it's going to be in a cross country race uh, in Australia. Now, not every country. And is there's for- no Grant Fisher because he's in Levin. Yeah, because everybody's in Levin. My point was not everybody's going to be there, but if you have the top runners from, or most of the top runners from Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, and then a couple others sprinkled in, you're going to come up with a great field. So it's very clear these countries are taking it seriously. What do you think is the, who wins the winter? The winner of this race, this world cross race this weekend, or the winner of the 3K in Levin. For the 5 or the 10? This. This is it. For 5K. This is better. I know. We you don't just think got... Jakob or Grant Fisher breaking a world record in a 3K, which well, Jakob's we don't know happened. Three. If you're listening to this, it could have already been a dud or an exciting race. Jakob ran 324. <laughs> but, like, you don't think that that field, you know, because Katir's in that right too and yeah, Fisher. Yeah, it's good. It's but... good. That, uh, that winner is going to be – this is less more, prominent than this one. I think this is more five and ten. Okay. This is more five and ten. That stuff's going to be more fifteen five. I mean, I, well, they both have five. Obviously not. Yeah. Look, listen, Jakob's been sick again. The race has already happened. But I just, <laughs> I like the depth of competition. I like the the pedigree of everybody involved. These aren't new names. No. These are established superstars with legit global titles. Going heads up. We've seen Chapter Guy win this race. We've seen Chapter Guy completely fall apart in this race. They're going to go for it. This is important to them. They're wearing their nation on their chest. I, I just, I'm impressed with the quality of it. I wish everybody took it that seriously. So I think, I think World Cross on the men's side is going to be terrific. Let's go to the women's side. Do you think the winner of this race will win the 10K in Budapest? I mean, if it's Joshua Chapter guy, yes. If it's not, I still probably picking Joshua Chapter guy because <laughs> I think he's the favorite. But this is a test, right? This is going to be a great a great field that he's going against. Who are the top Americans kind of in the field? Like, do you think there's any chance an American? Can... Boar, I, I thought after U.S. cross, I said, can Boar get into the top 10? But now I'm looking at this field. That's going to be very tough. It's yeah. going to be more like a, a top 20. Especially as a. Well, Ethiopia. Look, at we, we, we mostly were talking about Uganda and Kenya. Ethiopia, Aragawi, Borega, yeah, it's, Mola. It's insane. Worku. Like that, that could be five guys right but there. But that's in front of It's him. on grass and not on a track. True. I think they'll be fine. I mean, Kip uh, Career. Unless they use the gra- – th- what we need to do. Got an idea. Right, okay. This is going to be bad, So this folks. is how we help the Americans win. Uh-huh. 
Oh, I know where you're going with we this. We replaced the grass with in the Australia grass? with the Super Bowl grass because that's how my Eagles lost is because of the Super Bowl grass. That's what slippery. you're saying, huh? We kind of get our juju, Put the longer... juju back by, boom, using that grass. We know about the slipperage. Slippage. The, the yeah. Ethiopians, Put... the Kenyans, Ugandans don't know about the slippage. Put the long spikes in. Put the long spikes in. Boom. We win the, the title. Team title. I like that that's how you've shifted the blank. Like, that's why the Eagles lost now. I mean, <laughs> you moved on. You pivoted real quickly from bad call to your number one grass. skill set being pass rush, being eliminated because of slippery grass. It's just, yeah. They were the only ones, too. The grass was like perfectly fine when the other team had the ball. So no, the, the idea is that they don't, the other team doesn't care about pass rush the way that's we right. care about yeah. it. Chris Jones. It's like the only all pro player on their defense. He's not a pass rusher or anything. Yeah, but that's not why they're good. Gordon, take the loss. Let's move on. All right. Whatever. <laughs> it's I'm okay. not taking the loss. It's man. A, don't blame it. On, the problem Sports is, are freaking stupid. The problem is you were going to blame it on the holding call, but then the guy said he held. And then once he did that, you guys had to pivot. You had to pivot quickly. So then you went to the pass rush. And then when that gets disproven, you know who, you're going to you know be like, Embiid's number one. Do you know who designed the grass for the Super Bowl? A Chiefs fan. Really? Yes. There you go. Like I said, 800,000. All right, women's, women's race. Headline here, Latenza Pet Day. Uh, five and ten, world record holder. She got the ten thousand gold in Eugene. She's got to be considered a fairly large favorite here. There are some good competitors though with her. Uh, Alamehu, fellow Ethiopian, should be solid. Daniel from Eritrea. Uh, for Kenya, you got Beatrice Chabet, who was silver in the five thousand, and then Nian Saba. The Saba of Burundi is scheduled to run here. We've seen how fast she's been able to run in the in the 10,000. Uh, U.S. team, Kurgat won at USA's. Kaladi was a little farther back, but I'd expect her to be up near the front of the American side again yeah. here and able to m mix it up. But I think, It is cool that Kurgat and Kaladi get to be teammates again. I know. That's sort of awesome, right? I love it. Do you think they're going to have like – they're going to wear turquoise? Turquoise underneath their <laughs> USA jersey. Joe Franklin's going to like call Franklin, in. It's yeah. going to be wonderful. I think Joe's going to give him a – there's there's definitely a group chat right now between Kurgat, Kaladi, and Joe Franklin, right? 100%. There's a text. Yeah, message. I'm sure now, I'm sure they had one back then. They just yeah, but revived now it. But yeah, but like all the other New Mexico athletes, it's like but just the three of them. Yeah. Some of them left the chat. Some, left, some left the chat. They started a new well, one. Well, the non-Americans left the chat. Yeah. Like Alice Wright's like not in the chat anymore because she's competition. Maybe as a second one. Yeah. Just a what I'm one. saying is, what does Joe Franklin say to them? It's like, hey. What did he always say? Find your, run find, with your friends? Run, yeah. So, yeah. Find your, well, they, they find your people. Yeah. 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 Um, I wonder how high they'll finish. Not sure. Again, you know, you have some superstars here, but you're not really, people aren't as plugged into, okay, well, how good is you, know, you assume you know, Ethiopia's four is going to be really good and Kenya's four is really good, but a couple of those runners have bad days and you could sneak up. But I think is going to be the big the big favorite here. I would expect her to roll. Uh, she's coming off the marathon, though, right? Last time we saw her, she was running Valencia. Now she's going all the way down to 10K. Um, U20s on the U.S. side, got a lot of names that people are familiar with because you got – the high school national champions you got the youngs out there. Um, they're both youngs. Just one young. I think just Lex. Lex, excuse me, my apologies. Or but Leo, I don't know. Mixed relay is what I want to talk about. Yes, this is what it all. This comes is what down. all comes down yeah. to. This is the pinnacle of our sport. The mixed four by two k on grass in Australia this weekend. Do you know who the favorite is? I looked through these star lists. Australia? I think it's got to be Australia. So, what what are the notable rosters we have here? Okay, well let me just let me just go through. Hold on. I don't even know who's on the U.S. roster. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you in a second. Don't want to get burned but, up. No, no. First, I'm looking for U20. Can you send me that URL? It's in the chat. It's man. The, that that URL didn't work in the chat. At the bottom. It didn't work. I tried it. H T T P W W. I tried it. I tried it. Did you just? Were you about uh, to... It's just Leo Young. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Leo Young. Um, this doesn't work. This is no. literally. I tried it. It didn't work. Okay. There you go. Try that one. All right. So, 
Nope. This this four by two. Didn't work. Four by two K. I think it's it's Australia to lose. Like I really do. Like I don't, and I'm not just saying that because they're competing at home. A lot of that, Matt. You know, it's going to rest on Oliver Hoare. He ran at Milrose and then flies all the way to Australia. But I think he'll be. I think he'll be ready to go. So they'll have theoretically they had they entered a bunch of people, but I think they'll run Hoare, Mick Swain, Jessica Hall, and Abby Caldwell, which is a legit four. Looking at these other teams. Ethiopia has Wale, who's run really fast. They have uh, Abebe, Abera, and Kasai. Great Britain can't match Australia. Kenya, they have Wan Yoni, who's an 800 guy <laughs> in here. So that could be interesting. Chibet, uh, Brenda Chibet is in there. Beatrice Chipkovic, that's the steeple world record holder. But this is a 2K. Now, I know it's 2K over grass, but I think the Aussies can, can run with them. Uh, Matthew Kipsang, et cetera, et cetera. Morocco, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, South Africa. Caster Semenya's entered for hey. South Africa, which is interesting. Um, and then the Ugandan team, Ronald Musagala is big time. U.S. is running Baston, Mann, Coburn, and Heather McLean. So they're running steeplers and a 1,500-meter runner. Yeah, that'd be cool. Everybody, Three steeplers and a 1,500-meter runner. There are runner. a lot of steeplers in here. Maybe people really did do the calculation of, like, your best runner is going to be your steepler. Yeah. So I, I think Australia should win this. I think they can beat Kenya. I think they can beat Ethiopia. I don't see any other sleepers here. I think this is this is Australia's time. And if they win it, man, they're going to be partying Hold on. in Sydney. Do you think? They're going to be partying in Canberra. They're going to have to shut, grease the poles in Melbourne. Bathurst is just going to be out and out. Bedlam. Wild. Just Bedlam in Bathurst. Bedlam in the bank. Yeah. No, here's the thing. Uh, do you think there's a chance that Australia rigged it? Because they recognize, hey, let's come up with a race, a relay that we have the best athletes for, which is a mixed gender four by two k. And other countries no, they didn't, don't have the best. Athletes they've run for. this. They've run this event before. That ruins add. my conspiracy. Yeah, Stop yeah. bringing that up. I'm talking about the conspiracy that Australia. Here's what they is did. Looking. Here's what they did. No, you want to know what the conspiracy is? What's the conspiracy? Or not the conspiracy. You know what their strategy was? What they came up with this crazy plan. What's that? Hold on, let me make sure I can yeah. hear myself. Mute, 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 mute. No, no, don't, don't mute anybody. I just okay. want to make sure. I can hear. They ran their best runners. They you know, looked at their entire population. And they just took the four best runners. And they found a database of the fastest times. Yeah. They looked at old performances. They said, hmm, who are the most qualified people to run two kilometers? And they picked those people. As they, opposed to what the other countries did, who just said, like, I guess you can run. <laughs> Let's take this hat and draw. And who know you don't want to run. You don't want, nobody wants to run. Some countries aren't even sending teams, like, for the meet in general. Yeah. Or they're just very scaled down. It's like three people from this, three women from this country. One, no, I'll show you. Now, granted, they had an advantage because they're running at home, but it was a very simple formula. Let's just pick the four best runners. Yeah. Let's just do that. You know, that's a, you're, you would make a great coach. It's like it's not hard, and they're gonna win using this formula. It's the a classic good, formula. It's a good time right now for Aussie mid distance running. So I'm not saying they always would have won by running their four best runners, but right now they knew if they got the best four, they'd be able to win. Imagine if other countries countered with their best four. Best four. Imagine a British team. That would be an exciting event with Josh Kerr. Laura Muir, Jake Whiteman, et cetera. Spain, we've talked about how good Spain is right now. What would, the, Norway, what, what would be the best U.S. team? The best U.S. 4 by 2 k team right now? Right now? Yeah, if they were running like a week from now. Uh, yeah. You'd have to put Jared Nagus on that Nagus team. Nagus would be one. I think you'd probably put, well, we don't know what, well, we do know what Fisher ran. We do know <laughs> what Fisher because it happened. Maybe you'd go... I don't know. Who would be a safer bet? Like a miler that would be just a real solid safe bet right now. I mean, Joe Klecker? No. Kincaid? No, it's too too short of a distance. I mean, Kincaid can run a really good 3K. Okay. He seems like he's got a kick. He's yeah. he's cross-country guy. He ran at Portland. Monson? So I think I think you do Kincaid, Nagus. Monson. You have to go Monson. Monson, yeah. Yeah, and then maybe do like Heather McLean. 
who's already who's on the team. Heather McLean. Right now. Right now. Yeah, she ran good in Boston. What about she's Emily McKay? Right no, McLean. McLean's she does McLean have distance in her though? I just feel like I'd err on the side of shorter distance. And if they fell apart in the last fifty or hundred, that's okay. You want more speed than strength. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the Kincaid thing I'd be iffy on. However, just tell if he gets the baton behind, he'll be in a familiar position. Just be like, Woody kick. Yeah. Do what you do normally in the last lap yeah. when you're behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then just go. Yeah. The US could have a legit team. I mean, imagine a Kenyan team with Faith Kipiegon, Timothy Chariot. It'd be, it'd be crazy. Keep saying. I mean, it'd be so good. But one could only dream. Australia knew that other countries weren't going to do that, so they countered with the ultimate gambit of all time. Run your four best runners. Run your four best runners. You can get a lot accomplished in life if you just have that mentality. But no one wants to do that. No one wants to put their full faith effort into something. I want it. It'll be interesting to see what happens when the U.S. hosts this in a few years. Oh yeah, we'll run our four best runners then. Yeah, and. So it's just basically going to rotate between whoever, the, whatever the host country is, that country is going to win the four by two. You game. know what I want to happen? So when is uh, World Cross in the U.S.? It's in Tallahassee, right? Is it twenty-seven? Whatever. We need to get like some sprint relay on grass, and I want to see like Curly Noah Lyles doing some like twenty twenty-six. Sorry, four hundred meter sprint on grass. So Croatia. I want a four by four on grass in Tallahassee. Croatia hosts it in 2020. We have one next year. So Croatia is going to have to scramble to get their 4x2K team together. I got a better idea for a sprint relay. Hear me out on this one. What's that? Tallahassee. 4x4, but here's the twist. Mixed gender. And then the U.S. can finally get that gold back. No? You're not with me? All right. I tried. Next. You know what would actually be a really fun? Hmm. An eight by something or a six by something. No, I think four is good because I don't want – not a lot. You'll start excluding a lot of countries. You want That's, it that's not my problem. Their countries have a lot of millions of people. I want and it they can't get to eight people. I that want doesn't it, make no, sense. I want to incentivize superstars competing. You want to figure out a way to get Safana on in on the relay. Because, I mean, you could say, hey, run the, the long course, like run the actual okay, course. Okay, better there. idea, better idea. Every Olympics and every global championships, you have the mercenary team, which is athletes who don't have a good country relay. They get to all come together and do superpowers. So it's like the the World Athletics team versus USA versus Jamaica versus Canada versus Great Britain, et cetera. No, I think we can get enough good – like Canada could have a good team, right? But imagine if we had an all-star 4x4 versus – Five other countries. I think you could get most of these. If you have a superstar on your team like Safan Hassan, and you just have two solid, you you can have a weak link on there, and it can get made up, because it would be tactical or something. Like I think you could have a legit ten to fifteen country relay here. Where well, what they don't if, need to have an all star team? What if we? I mean, we already talked about this, and you got really mad about which I still hold by that take. But like, let's stop doing countries and just start doing like. What I get really Whatever mad about? Whatever you want. You just do brands. Nike team versus the DS team. When did versus... I get mad about this? I because I put... Oh, because your team was wrong. I no, didn't get mad at the, right. I, the idea. I just, it was a bad, a bad team. That's fine, but for the world championships, you're doing it based on country. Yeah, I yeah. just think you could... I just like it when I see... So say you have Norway, right? I just want Carson Warholm on like a DMR. Yeah. Say you have Norway, though. For a f I'm sticking with 4x2K here. I'm not yeah, going to 4x2K. Yeah. DMR. You have two Inga Britsons you can throw out there for the men's legs, right? You, you can cobble together two – so where they're in range. I'm not saying they would be the favorite, but they'd at least be in range, at least be in the conversation, have a credible team. And that's the case with a, a number of countries I could think of who have like one or two superstars, and then you just figure out the other two, 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 two pieces. The favorites would be the teams that are – more well-rounded, the Australias, the Kenyas, the Ethiopias of the world. But, I mean, imagine Ingerbritsen getting the baton two, three seconds down. You're not turning that off. You want to see if you can do it. Yeah. And, and same thing with Safan Hassan. It almost makes it better that they're not on a super team for the purposes of a relay. That's why relays are awesome. True enough. Fair enough. Uh, David says, Gordon, that was with the World... They did that in the World Cup starting in 1977. Oh, the, they did? 
I haven't been following the sport since then. He's been doing it just a decade. For decade. Me. The most How Gordon's, many people understand the most that Gordon's reference? Ever, well, I'll explain it right now for those of them tuning in because they're loyal listeners. The most Gordon has ever got mad at me <laughs> was when I wasn't even trying to say anything mean. Yeah, you It were. was post-Usain Bolt take, I think, correct? After the Usain Bolt take. Yeah, in Eugene. Yeah, and I was trying to say hey, he's covered it for a while. He's not new to this. He's covered it for a decade. But I use decade as just a general term. The, the clip got consumed by a number of people, and they took it extremely literally. And they said, why am I listening to a guy who's Who, only followed the sport for 10 years? Since 2012. Yeah. <laughs> of course you don't know anything about Bolt. You missed an entire Olympics and world championships. And I said, no, I meant as a broad term. And then Gordon got mad. Yeah. And now I've only been following it for a decade. I mean, I've only been working at Flow for almost a decade. It's not, years. but it's more than a de- decade because now we're at 11 years. So I can't say that anymore. All right. Peter Bowl and then emails. And then we're going to watch Levin. Yes. Rewatch Levin because it already it. happened. It already happened. And so that good. was such a. Whew. Yeah. Uh, Peter Bowl. We can't been believe the DQ happened, though. In the race? In the race. That. That. Towards the guy. Girl moment, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, Peter Bull, he was provisionally suspended after testing positive for EPO. He asked for his B sample to be tested in order to clear himself. And the B sample did not come back as a positive, came back as an adverse finding, but not a positive, which means he is allowed to compete. Um, now, the anti-doping agency in Australia said they're still going to investigate the case, in part because it wasn't a, a negative, it was just a, an adverse finding. Right? So it landed somewhere in that middle ground there. But very interesting case. We do not see this very often. We see athletes claim their innocence, uh, maybe not as quickly and as comprehensively and as, as vociferously as Bull did, although you can unearth some examples. But in the current era, there's a lot more silence and vague talk around it. He was pretty concrete. He was pretty upfront with it. He wanted it retested. Um, it got retested. And now he is, for the time being, clear to compete. What do you think? Were you surprised? Yeah, I was surprised. But I think my my take or my reaction to this is now that you have one situation where a B sample has like proven... I guess a, a, a recent situation where B sample. Yeah, it's happened before. It's happened but, before, but a recent situation of a notable athlete where B sample is kind of validated uh, against an A sample. We're going to hear a lot of future people who legitimately are doping who are going to be like, oh, you just need to check the B sample. Yeah. And people are going to use the B sample defense as like their first round of, you know, but then, all tainted me, uh, B sample. It's going to become the new like. Oh, I, my grandma died. That's why I missed my whereabouts failure. It's going to be another new, like, but the thing let's with, latch onto what Bull did. But the thing is, this is concrete. It's not, it's provable. Yes, yeah, true. Theoretically, it's provable. Yeah. Now they could claim, oh, this just throws into doubt the entire testing process. And what are we doing here? This laboratory is, is spouting out, you know, unscientific results. And it needs to be way more precise if you're dealing with something as precious as someone's career. But the whole, the excuse of, oh, why I wasn't here, why I wasn't there, a lot of that is difficult to prove. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times it's not. This is, hey, the guy said the beat sample would say that he wasn't positive. Now we get it back and it says, ad, you know, it was a, what's the terminology here? What did I say? Adverse finding? I mean, good for him though. Like I'm sure it's been held the past, how many weeks has it been since the first news Atypical broke? finding. Sorry. I said adverse how finding. How many Atypical. weeks has it been since the first when the news broke in the beginning, it's been what, two weeks? Oh, Three not weeks? not long at all. One week? Yeah, and you kind of wish, hey, could they have done both of them at the same time? And then just can't well, they just have the A and the B and they go dip, dip, and they're you're, done? You're the science guy. Yeah, that seems a lot more. I mean, I guess the news situation is kind of who found, who leaked the A sample report. That might be an issue because now he's kind of has to deal with like a little bit of his name being tainted and. The mm-hmm. press or – I mean, people are going to be like, all right, whatever. Like, yeah, you you didn't dope because the B sample proved that the A sample was fraudulent. So – but here's a question. Now, this may sound stupid. I'm probably not going to have the answer to but it. But if the B sample is able to prove the A sample is wrong, why can't an A sample, sample. prove a B sample Well, because I think you need both, right? You need, you need both to line up. 
to hit that threshold. Got it. Right. And this is why, I mean, it's good that you have both samples. Yeah. Right? And this is why you want to have a process that's very thorough. People want information immediately. People want yeah. to say, you know, the, the punishment should be swift and let's hand it down right now. But it is, it, it sometimes is a lot more complicated than that. I know we want science to be clean cut, but it's not. But again, yeah, the, the finding was atypical, atypical finding. I misspoke before. I said adverse. That was the first Dude, one. Dude, Peter Ball should go hop and get on a plane to... Lee Van? No. It already happened. Oh, yeah. No, to uh, run in the 4x2K. Oh. A little celebration. What could he run a 2K in? I mean, he'd be... Well... He'd be, be tired. Well, when, when, does, when does he get tired? When 1,200 meters? When Yoni's running it. And yeah. that guy's... That guy's an 800 guy. Uh, there were two emails I wanted to read. That, yeah. I, that I've been forgetting to read. Let's read them. One of them's a little bit out of date, but that's okay. Actually, they're, they're both out of date. That's fine. Um, we, I mean, Levin happened. Yeah, it already happened. What a what a great meet that was. Yeah. Mondo? Holy crap. Did not see that fall well, Mondo, happening. Someone posted in the chat about... Oh, it already happened now? We actually know the Mondo news? Well, he just started vaulting. Uh, All right. Um, this is from Hannah. Hi, Gordon, Kevin, and Colt. Um, just listen to Wednesday's episode, and although I get that Gordon taking... Uh, taking the cap off the bike is technically stealing. I've definitely been there too. When I ran cross hey. country in college, I stole chocolate milk from another team's tent from an unopened pack of Nesquik bottles. I feel like this is similar to your situation, Gordon, since the chocolate milk was the whole team's instead of a specific person's. My only regret was that I only took one. Hey, exactly. People, when you see a bunch of something, you feel like it's okay to like just take a 1% of it. You know? I mean, there's a bunch of... City bikes out there with lots of caps. What's one cap of a mo of a million city bikes? I literally did that. Speaking of the chocolate milk thing, we did that the other day. They were uh, setting up for um, the. I you, should, just, you just incriminate yourself incriminate on the daily. Here. Yeah, stop. No, but the Austin the Austin Marathon. You need this, a lawyer. The Austin Marathon's this weekend. Yeah. Good luck to all the people running out there. Are you yeah. running the Austin Marathon? I am not. I ran four and a half miles this morning though. That's your good. marathon. That's a marathon That's in a goal itself. For me. Austin Marathon is this weekend. And they were setting up the food, like, treats, things, like, packaging that you get at the end of a marathon in here for some reason. And so I saw a bunch of little fruit cups. And I was like, what's one fruit cup? And so I took a fruit cup. So if there's if so the point missing, is, Gordon if, will steal from anybody. If you finish the Austin Marathon this weekend and there are no fruit cups left, I'm sorry. They were one short because I <laughs> ate a fruit cup. All right. The other one comes from Steve. This is out. This is about uh, the thing Mo scratching Milrose. This is a long, <laughs> long time ago, but that's okay. It's a good email, and the first sentence is incredible. Okay, he says, "I love the pod. The banter is unparalleled. I want better for Gordon in life, but I leave, but I believe it would detract from the quality of the episode. So please keep bringing the cooked takes and stealing from the public." Hey, and that's a solid description of you: cooked takes and stealing from the public. Cooked takes. Yeah, you're my cake. Cooked. Second, one part of the discussion around the decision that seemed left out from the conversation uh, about uh, uh, Mo scratching Milrose is the mental com competition angle. I think most of us that have been coaching running have heard about how important a solid mental game is to getting our best performances from ourselves. With that in mind, I offer this take. If Keeley didn't run such an insane 600 earlier this season, a thing would be on the line at Milrose. Mm. That's his take. So he likes your cooked takes. He's presenting one of his own. I think this is a war game. If a thing goes out to the armory and doesn't run a better time than Keeley, then she has just pr uh, provided her fiercest competition with a win, in quotes, without them even towing the line together. And she has also created doubt in her own mind. It definitely sucks for us as fans for her to withdraw. But as a coach of a thing, I can totally understand telling a thing. This 600 isn't that important to our overall plan. And there are more downsides and upsides. Let's keep training. Better for a thing to leave the question mark on everyone's mind, including her own and Keeley's, as to whether she could have beaten that 600 time than to go out there and fall short. Thanks for reading. That is Steve. Um, thank you for the email. It's a great email. Okay. We always talk about this stuff in the context of us as fans. Oh, this is a bummer. This person scratched. Okay. So we, get, we all yeah. get that. At this point, point has been made. So I like this email because he's looking at it from her perspective. So if you were her or Bobby Kersey, her coach, and your whole goal was to win the world championships this year, do you think he has a point in terms of playing that mental game? Yes and no. 
yes, what he says makes absolute a lot of sense that you want to protect the fear of a mental loss because then that may affect you down the road because you're like, ooh, there's a little bit of like, she's coming up on me. And give her confidence. You could build a little bit of tension and then you're not as loose and then that could result in a, a loss at Worlds. However, the counterpoint to that is you really need to be protected about a mental loss in February. Is your athlete really that vulnerable? You have bigger problems. If you're worried about a mental loss, about a fake 600 time trial, but do there's you think bigger it, problems. But would it give, and not just in this instance, but say another one, do you think it gives your competition confidence? Because I think it does. When Wouldn't you're you, able to line up two performances at the same distance a couple weeks apart. I don't know. And you, just, you don't want to give them any sort of hope. You don't want to open that window even a little bit. There's also an argument that it's actually good when your competition has confidence. Ooh. Because you want them overconfident. Yeah. And then you, or you go out there and you beat their time by a um, second and you say, no, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're getting no confidence here. No, like, but like if you, you want your opponent to be confident, not having the underdog mentality. Okay. Because when you have the underdog mentality, yeah. you win the Super Bowl. When you don't have the underdog mentality, like when the books say that the Eagles are okay. one and a half all point right, favorites, all right, all right, all right. you lose. I'm glad we got to that. You lose. So, yeah, being an underdog is actually better. So it actually would have been better for her to run, run awful, then get the underdog instead of being like, hey, you're undefeated against Keeley. Yeah, okay. So she actually, she should have ran and run like, got like fifth. Yeah. It would actually been the best situation. If it's Coach Gordon, I would say go out there and like put her on the work, make her do a, the most incredible workout the night before so she's yeah. so tired. Don't tell her. Make her lose. Make her lose all of her confidence. And then be like, you know what? This is your moment. Underdog story. You're coming back from that Milrose embarrassment to win a world title. Dude, that's a good addition of Internet Coach. Yeah. We should bring that back. We should. I like looking at it from that perspective. Because, yeah. again, again, you're going to get almost 100% agreement on the fans wanted her to run. Right? <laughs> no, this is not controversial at all. It's, yeah. But more of the, hey, why? And if you were in her position – Given the constraints of track and field, which we all disagree with, but at this point, if you're paying close attention to track, if you've been following the sport as long as Gordon has, or maybe even half as long as Gordon has, you understand it, right? You understand people are going to scratch. All right, but is the scratch beneficial? Is there any sort of motivation? Because there are mind games that go into this. Let's go back last year. Let's go to the World Championships. Why did Fred Curley say he ran 9-7 in the first round? Mind games. Because he said everybody's going to go to bed tonight thinking about holy crap a nine seven. I went to bed that night thinking about nine seven. Gordon and... was shook. That led to Gordon being featured in a rap song in Jamaica. Because <laughs> I saw the nine seven. That's how widespread Fred Curley's mental yeah. game was. It didn't just impact his competitors. It shot all the way to the media area yeah. where Gordon's head was spinning. Yeah. So I don't. And the fewer. Games you play, the fewer times you race, the fewer matches you can test in a sport, the bigger the mental component, I think, can be, right? Because there's no other point to test yourself. There's, there's fewer benchmarks to measure yourself against. If you're a boxer and you're training five months for one prize fight, that's why they're, all that stuff's mental games, right? Yeah. G going down to the press conference where they're all yelling at each other or a UFC competition, the same thing. And in track, when you're only running five, six, seven times a year, I think they're really trying to get – and that margins are really small. Even when they're the favorite, it's like – we'd all agree a thing Mo is a favorite over Keely Hodgkinson. Yeah. But the margin is still relatively small. Half a percentage here, half a percentage there. But they're going to they're gonna take any opportunity they can to gain just that little bit of mental edge. So I like it. Um all right, that's it. That's the pod. Let me check on the chat here. Matthew says, why do they keep saying the leave-in meet was so good? It's still in the middle of it with the best events yet to happen. Keep watching. Keep watching. You'll find out why. <laughs> Maybe we know the future. Maybe we have inside access where the meet actually happened in a facility. It's going to be bad if the power goes out or something and the meet gets canceled. This is not going to age well at all. It's not going to age well no matter what. Please. No, all the other things were correct. That's true. They did, yeah. The, we just, speaking we, of speaking we, of Hodgkinson, we predicted that the athletes would run. That's the only prediction we made. How about Hodgkinson? 
What did you think of that run? Speaking of confidence. You know what? Let's just, for the hell of it, we're doing another podcast like less than 24 hours from now, reacting yeah. to Levin. Yeah. What actually happened? Here we go. Let's we, let's play this back. What happened in Levin? Let me pull up this start list. No, 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 no. Yeah. Well, no, no. And I'm not looking at the results. Um, just I'll, make one. Let's pick one race. No, and let's, I'm go, let's, let's let's say exactly what happened. I mean, Warholm is going to win, but it, the time's not going to be insane. No, I, I I want a specific. Let's pick the men's 3K. How does it play out? Who's in the lead with one lap to go, and who wins? Just tell me how it plays out. Ready and go. What think, happened in the men's 3K? I think Germa's going to win. Germa's going to win. Germa's going to win. Who's going to be in the lead with with 200 meters to go? 200 meters to go. One lap to go. I'll take Katir. So Katir's going to be in the lead. Mm -hmm. Where will Jakob and... Jakob's not running that event. He's running the 15. Oh, sorry. Where would... Sorry. <laughs> All right. Let's stop this game. Game canceled. Clearly, I haven't seen the race yet. Gordon doesn't know who's in the race. So Where will Fisher be? Where will Fisher's time be? So... So you think Germa's going to win? You me... think... Um, you think Katir will be in the lead? Yeah. And then what do you think Fisher runs? I think Fisher... I mean, Nagu says the American record. I think he's going to break the American record. Wow. Yeah. Because I think seven, the winning time is going to be 726. Don't say I think he's going to break the American. Just he, say what's happening. He's going to break the American. Okay. He didn't go all the way over there. And this race is going to be quick enough because they're talking world record for yeah. the, or, or thereabouts. And um, yeah, I think Gurma. Well, now hold on. I'm changing my pick. Be con hold on to your convictions, man. I just don't know how in shape any of these guys I are. I know. That's what sucks about track on like season debuts. You're like, I don't know if you're where you are in your training. Yeah, you could literally just if we had live access to every one of their training runs, we'd be really good at our jobs. Yeah, that would be a fun. Yeah, this is Gurma's debut. Screw it, I'm just gonna go with it. All right, Gurma for the win. Katir second. Yeah, he's, Fisher third. He's run seven. He ran seven twenty seven in Levin last year. All right, All let's right. see if it happens. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about the pod. That's it, man. Oh yeah, what's that music? Awesome. Thanks to Nico. Thanks, Nico. For producing. What a day. What a meet Levin was. Can't wait to talk Come about back, it tomorrow. 9 a.m. Central tomorrow. Levin recap. And then we're saying farewell to Gordon for a couple days. He's going to come back after that. <laughs> Bye, guys. Heart just stopped.